Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel, Blue Lady Couture. Today I am finally doing my sewing room, workroom tour for you. Um, if you've been following my channel for a little while, you will know that over the Christmas and New Year period, I actually blitzed my sewing room um, and did a major tidy up overhaul and reorganised all the storage to create a, a better working environment and b a better backdrop for my videos so hopefully you like this new backdrop and definitely a lot better than it was before. Um, so yeah so that happened way back in uh, December into early January and then work just happened and I didn't get time to film uh, this particular video uh, again until now. So yeah, I've actually had a uh, <laughs> another good tidy up this weekend because unfortunately that's what happens when um, when I'm busy and I'm working. Um, it does create a bit of mess and lots of projects everywhere. So at the moment, the studio is back to a nice sense of tidiness. So I thought I would quickly this afternoon do my room tour uh, and show you around and show you my space. Um, how I make it work for me um, and hopefully it'll give you uh, guys some tips as well um, and I also hope you find it just interesting just to see how I work. Get a cup of tea and uh, follow me around my sewing room. Okay so I thought I'd start with just an initial overview of my workroom as you walk in the door this is kind of what you see. So you've got the desks down the side there which haven't really changed much from my previous videos but if we move around You'll remember that that corner is where the old bookcase shelving unit was which had all my fabric storage in and it is now pretty much an empty space which is is great um, you can see I've got the mannequins over there at the moment with some current projects on um, spinning around past the uh, iron and ironing board um, and then into the corner over here which is where we've had the most drastic change um, I've got my pattern cutting table and I've got my new shelving storage units um, and then right the way around um, is I've still got the hanging rack up here with current uh, projects popped up there out of the way. So looking at the corner where my new shelving units are um, and you can see all my fabric um, on them You'll probably remember from my previous video, which I will link in the description down below. Um, I did a brief overview of this when it was finished and you would have seen me filling these shelves um, as part of that last video as well. Um, because it took me days to actually go through and organise um, all my fabric. Um, but it is now organised and it is amazing. Um, Previously, when it was just in the corner on the old shelving, I'd started to try and organise it according to um, kind of fabric types and colours. Um, but it just, as I got more and more fabric, um, I just couldn't keep on top of keeping it organised. Um, so it ended up just getting piled in sort of other boxes and, and bags. And I couldn't really see what I had there. Um, and now everything is organised um, and I can actually, I, I know what I've got and I, I can see what I've got at just a, a glance. Um, and it's it's been amazing because I've actually, there's certain fabrics where I've, you know, working on projects for a customer and I've actually been able to go, actually, I've got the perfect fabric for that. Or I don't actually need to buy any white cotton lining because I've got loads of it already. <laughs> so yeah, so it's been absolutely great. I organised the fabric into as fewer basic types as I could, just to try and keep things simple, if that makes sense. And then I've columnized it all, um, so I know exactly what is in each column and each cubby hole over here. So if we start here on the right hand side, uh, this column here has got all my taffetas in it, and I use these nearly every day or certainly every week um, for a lot of my Victorian style outfits and my steampunk bustles and, and those kind of garments. All my large length pieces of fabric are on the shelves um, and then in the pull out box under here is all the remnant scraps or cabbage um, depending on your terminology 
cabbage is now my new favourite word for scrap fabrics. And then I've rolled these <laughs> in a, a Marie Kondo uh, style, so I can easily see at a glance, you know, what I have I've got in each of these. And in here it is all, all the taffetas, so it's relevant to what's in the shelves above. Then on the next row is my linens, which again is a fabric that I use every week um this is gets used for a lot of my edwardian outfits so again all the larger pieces in the the cubbies above i've also got some slightly patterned linens in there too and then this bottom one i have got um some of my, my wool type uh wool fabrics some of them are, are, are real well some of them are, are, are poly blends um but they are all fitted in there and then again in the box underneath is the the, the remnant pieces in there as well so you've got my, my linen pieces in there it's falling over and then i've got some wool scraps in there as well um, the next row, if we come back up to the top, so on the very top up there, um, I've got some of my old uh, sketchbooks that I've uh, filled over the years um, with very you know, design work. Um, and I've got some photo albums in there as well. Um, and I think there's a couple of blank sketchbooks, sketchbooks even up there. Uh, so I can just grab them if I ever want to look something up. Then underneath I have got my uh plain cottons these are all quite sort of lightweight sort of lining kind of weight cottons um in there and then underneath i've got heavier twill type cottons um and some prints as well i'm trying to sort of color organize it um but it's not always as straightforward as that so it's you know but the main thing is that i can still see what i've got in in each um in each section so coming down again some more print type cottons um, in there um, and then underneath that this bottom shelf I've got some lengths of cotton velvet so it's in the cotton column because it's cotton but it's the velvets uh, all in there Ooh, focus to the camera um, and again uh, underneath in the drawer is all the a lot of scraps of uh, of cotton apparently um so there's scraps of cotton velvet in here cotton stripes which i use a lot well these are often often left over from i do striped variations of my my bustle skirts and victorian jackets um and i also use these for my stripy victorian style bathing costumes as well um, and a lot of these remnants i'll actually use to make um bustle pads and sort of little things like that so that that's a great use of cotton cotton scraps in there and then over here if we ooh, on the very top shelf up there i've got some lengths of cotton corduroy um it's just a few odd lengths that didn't fit in the the cotton column so i've just popped them up there um out of the way then underneath that is oh, mind the <laughs> the very vicious hanging roll tube thing I don't know if you've ever seen these before, but these are these are so vicious, but they are quite clever. So you you hang the the fabric rather than rolling it, and it just stops things like uh, delicate and piled kind of fabrics like this velvet getting getting crushed with all the all the weight of the fabric around it on a roll. Um, so yeah, but it has these horrible vicious little little spiky hook things. Anyway, I digress. Um, so yeah, back to the shelving unit. The lining fabrics are in that cubby. So I've got plain linings in there. Then underneath I have uh, my pretty uh, jacquard linings in there. Followed by uh, satins are in the shelf here. I don't use a lot of satin, um, but what I have got is in there. Then underneath is mostly silks and Fancy brocades. Um, so yeah, I've got some very nice silk fabric pieces in there. Silk dupions, a lot of there, and some of the fancy brocades. These aren't necessarily all silk, but they're quite fancy sort of fabrics. So I put them in the, the fancy fabric column. And again, um, a lot of scraps of silk, and that lighting is atrocious. I apologise for that. So I decided I wanted to have a kind of a little bit of a display shelf 
um, rather than just a solid wall of fabric shelving. So on up here, um, I have got a hat box uh, with some uh, other hats as well. I've also got my little mermaid headdress, and I have this really this cute globe lamp. I'll turn it on. Which <laughs> it was made. I made it from globe lamp, um, but it was one of the blue plastic ones, and I decided I wanted to try and vintageify it um, by covering it in strips of tea stained paper. It kind of worked, but yeah, kind of didn't um, because I could have just gone out and bought a vintagey globe lamp. But never mind. But I, what I actually wanted to do with it was record all the places in the world where I send uh, my parcels to, if I can turn it without... It's not going to turn, why would it turn? It's stuck against the wall, there we go. So yeah, so all the places that I've sent packages to, I've marked them on my little map. No um, joke, it's my little, my world domination map. There we go, look, my, my one parcel that I once sent to Japan, and then I've done one or two to Australia and New Zealand. And obviously the UK and Europe up there, there's quite a few few parcels in there. But there's still a lot of world left to dominate with Blue Lady Couture pretties. So that's that's my yeah, that's my plan. Global domination via pretty dresses. So yeah, so that is up there. Um and then in the background I've got these posters. That top one I bought on my very first ever trip to the v &A Museum in London. Um, it must have been on a school trip and it was, yeah, it was my first time seeing the costume gallery at the, the v &A Museum um, and I bought that in the gift shop. Um, I think it's supposed to be wrapping paper but I've never, I've always had it as a, as a poster in my uh, in my room for many many years and now it lives here in my sewing room and next to it is another similar uh, version of the same thing um, which was a present from a secret Santa uh, a few years ago um, but it kind of matches that so I've got like a, a pair of, of those um, and they look quite pretty there on the walls. Underneath that one on this lower unit down here I've got the printer and various books on the bookshelves underneath um, so these books all used to live in our living room uh, downstairs, but I decided that I wanted to really bring my um, my fashion and my costuming books up here into the workroom, and it's actually been really handy in the last few months to have these on hand, so that I can just, if I want to check a reference or you know I'm sort of struggling with a, a design detail, um, I can go back to my books and. Uh, and have a look in there for any ideas and inspiration. So on this shelf up here next to the printer are the these big books which don't fit in the <laughs> the shelves underneath so they have to live up there and then I've got some of my sort of pattern drafting books which I kind of pull out on a regular basis so these are like my, my pattern cutting bibles which I've used ever since I was at, at uni that's what they used to teach us pattern, pattern cutting pattern drafting and then I've also got um some some very rare books actually this book is so so rare this was a gift from my in-laws i don't know how or where they found it but yeah this is an original book from world war one it's okay over here because it's away from the direct sunlight of the window so i'm, I'm kind of happy for it to be there this was from when i went to paris a couple of years ago and i got to see the uh, the mucca exhibition at the, the Musée du Luxembourg, which was incredible. It was amazing to see all of his original artworks up close. Um, and the museum had produced some of these really lovely commemorative uh, booklets, which is really pretty. So I had to pick myself up one of those because it was only six euros. Um, I couldn't afford some of the more expensive books at the time. Yeah, and then coming down underneath, I've got a lot of my costume history books some of you will very well be familiar with um i've also got my uh machine uh manuals in there as well yeah, so there's costume history books i've got sort of vintagey books this side over here which is kind of tucked behind um the rolls of fabric which are coming in the in the corner here i've got a lot of tv adaptation movie adaptation Books. So you can see I've got some of the, the Downton Abbey books, the Titanic companion book, the Cranford Chronicles, if you remember that. Yeah, so they're just, they're really interesting because it's 
often from especially a costume design point of view it's interesting to have these kind of behind the scenes books to see some of the detail that went into the designing of the costumes and then I've also got some other things I've got my my, my OK magazine <laughs> with the royal wedding dresses under there as well because who doesn't love a royal wedding dress that is my amazing new shelving unit which i'm so pleased with so if you didn't know and you've not followed my other videos these are from ikea these are the calax units and they come in these these loads of different sizes um and you can mix and match them to you know suit your your room size and then you can buy all these little infill bits as well so these little sort of shelf units here um, a little separate insert which obviously double, doubles up the shelf space um, and then you buy the, uh, the the fabric basket sort of box things underneath there as well uh, the cupboard units again are all part of that range so you can you can mix and match that to uh to create your own kind of unique storage solution and um, whatever works for you and spinning round again as i said behind the printer in the corner over there I've got all the rolls of fabric and there's just enough space in the corner just to tuck a few of those out of the way. To be honest, these days I don't get a lot of fabric sent to me on the roll unless it's like a really big roll. Most of my fabric suppliers are trying to cut costs, I think, by um, sending stuff rolled um, as much as possible. Um, but yeah, but there's still a few rolls in the corner there. Then I have the hanging rack with current projects on in there. Some of it's in dress bags, some of it's you can see there's a corset mock-up hanging up in there um, and then there's a part finished garment in the bag there. So now I'm going to talk about my pattern cutting table which I know a lot of you will have seen briefly in again previous videos um, and a lot of you gave me some really nice comments on this and asked a lot of questions about it. I'll hopefully try and answer any questions that you uh, that you gave to me um, but again always you know don't be afraid to pop me a question in the comments down below uh, and I'll do my best to answer for you. So yeah so this pattern cutting table was made by my very clever husband and it was following a Pinterest kind of tutorial um I found other people that had done it um online and uh, thought yeah that looks like a really good idea um and yeah followed suit so this was made kind of a couple of years ago actually when I first did my well, my very first sort of makeover of my sewing room um but I didn't video or, or anything at that time that was way before you know YouTube had entered <laughs> entered Blue Lady Couture's life but yeah but this is made from Again, the Calax units, so the same range as the shelving units at the back there. Um, but it's these uh, slightly smaller, kind of narrower units. So there's two of them back to back. Um, so you've got, I've got the storage on this side and then I've got the same storage on the other side as well. So they're kind of bolted together and then underneath, if you're going to be able to see very well, um, they're actually on, we've mounted them on caster wheels, um, which is really great because it means I can just shunt this table around a little bit if I need to create a little bit more space. Uh, in this room because this does does double up as our, our spare room um, and we can pop the airbed in here uh, for guests as and when needed. Then on top of the table, just the shelving units on their own, it's just a little bit too low for pattern cutting out, you need a little bit of height so you're not sort of bending over, crouched over all the time, it's not good for the back. So we've increased the height of the table by using these, I think these are a kitchen cabinet legs mounted on here and then on top of that we've got this table surface um which again this is all from uh from ikea and you can choose different uh, like wood effect finishes um or you can get a plain uh just a plain white one but i like the idea of having um the the wood effect on the top it just makes the room feel a little bit warmer and um, a little bit less harsh um with all the white as well and that makes a, a really great pattern cutting uh surface uh, so the length of the table is uh one meter 50 150 centimeters which is you know, it's a, it's a really, it's a useful length. Occasionally, if I'm doing something like my uh, velvet um, cloaks, um, I will cut them out on the floor still, on the carpet, um, just because it just stops it moving around and it, you can get the nice long length. In the kind of the little cubby space underneath, I've got things like my, my pattern cutting weights and scissors, um, and there's a few pencils and things under there as well. So things that I can just easily grab when I'm, I'm pattern cutting. Then in the shelving underneath, I've got all my pattern, books or pattern folders. Most of the patterns I use I have actually drafted myself and then I store them in these folders um, which 
Some of them are a little bit tatty because the stickers didn't want to stick down, but you can see they are kind of organised in kind of era and sort of style. Um, so yeah, and I like to have pretty stationery because, yeah, it might be work, but there's no reason it can't be pretty. Um, so yeah, some of those, those prettier folders I think came from paper chase. Then in the far cubby hole on the end there, I have a lot of my uh, fabric sample books. Um, so when I'm ordering fabric on planning uh, projects, um, it's really handy to have those to hand. I can just grab those and check colours and um, you know, obviously make a plan for when I'm ordering fabric. Underneath in these drawers, which again are part of the IKEA Kallax storage solution. So these are all made to obviously fit perfectly in these these cubby hole shelves, um, these double storage, double fabric, oh my god, words, <laughs> double drawers made of uh, fabric, so they're quite nice and lightweight and they're just easy to, uh, to move around. But in here, you might remember seeing this from my previous video, I've got all my laces and these are all now organised as well, which is amazing because if you saw the previous video of the state that these were in. <laughs> it was shocking. Um, but yeah, now these are all organised. So in this top drawer, I've got all my white and ivory laces, a little bit of cotton laces, um, ruffle trims, I've got brodery anglaise, um, there's sort of Nottingham lace in there as well. And I think there's some cotton crochet lace at the back there as well. And this one, ooh, if I can find it underneath, it's got all the black laces in, so you're probably not going to be able to see that very well because it's because of the lighting on the black. Um, but yeah, again, just different types of black lace that I use a lot in there. And then in these drawers, this bottom one here, oh, of course the whole lot's going to come out. Ooh, okay, re-picking up the camera. <laughs> in this drawer, I have a lot of my coloured laces um, that I use. So they again, they're all now organised in there. And in this top drawer, oh, hang on, I'm going to have to use the foot. Oh, there we go. Um, and this drawer has kind of some fancier laces in it, um, some embroidery laces. Um, and also, that bag has got faux fur trimming in it, um, which is why it's in that bag so it doesn't shred everywhere. Um, and then I've also got some extra pieces of black lace in there as well, because some of this this kind of stuff I use a lot. So I kind of buy it in bulk um, and it doesn't all fit in the one drawer, so stuff that I'm not using at the moment can go in the back of this drawer. Then over here, this drawer has got scrap lengths. Um, of my fabrics in it. So what I tend to do when I'm cutting waistbands is I basically I cut a four inch strip um, across the, the, the width of the, the fabric um, and then I cut my waistbands and my plackets, my skirts from that and then quite often, um, you know, after I just cut it to the, the, the waist measurement needed um, so quite often there's these kind of sort of lengths left which although I can't do a lot with them they are really useful for um creating plackets so if there's ever you know a, a need that I, I haven't got enough width in the fabric to to get the waistband and the placket out instead of having to cut a sh another strip off just to get a placket um, I will probably have some spare pieces in here so this top drawer mostly has uh taffeta pieces in it and then the drawer underneath has got a lot of the uh, linen and sort of cotton um, bits or useful lengths in it as well. There. Then the last cobby hole on that side has got wadding, which I use to mostly it's used to pad out uh, my mannequins, and I also use it to fill in you know, like my bustle pads, that kind of thing. I've also got a roll of waistband tape there as well. And this here um, is what I use to cover the, the mannequins when I'm doing photography. Now I've come round to the other side of the pattern cutting table. Um, so as I said a little bit earlier, um, it's made from two of these shelving units uh, clamped back to back. Um, so I've got the, the storage on one side, but then I've got the same storage on this side as well. So this side I've 
got these uh, baskets. This is what I used to have my lace kind of stored in. Um, but as you can probably see from <laughs> slightly earlier, um, I had so much lace that they were, it was just overflowing out of these. But these baskets have actually come in useful over here. So now I keep a lot of the sort of the business stationery stuff over here. So on this side, I've got um, a lot of my uh, postage equipment. So I've got sellotape and scissors. Um, I've got um, stickers, mailing envelopes um, and tissue paper all live in there. Then next door is just more general stationery so in this basket um i've got a lot of uh, so, so pencil cases with spare pencils and stuff in i've got some uh, fabric pens in there and again various different uh tins of coloring pencils and um sort of drawing medium in there for when i'm doing design work and things like that um, more scissors and pieces in there. This cubby hole is a bit of a general storage cubby hole really in this one at the moment. So I have got, uh, there is a, originally a toolbox, but I kind of use it to store a lot of my um, beading tubs in. Um, I've also got the hat from the Victorian fairy tale, a little mermaid men's outfit in there. Um, and this cardboard box here with this green thing in it, this is the eyelet press for when I'm doing corsetry. So that lives in there. And then in the Disney Princess box next door, which has a plastic bag stuffed in it at the moment because that's really atrocious. <laughs> um, it's actually a dress bag, I think, for some reason has been popped in there. But this box here has got a lot of my corsetry um, components in it as well. We've got Kutil uh, fabric, um, then you can see there's bags of eyelets and uh, boning ends. There's rolls of boning in there as well. Underneath in these uh, fabric boxes is more fabric. So I have got this end box down here. Um, it's got mostly fabric that is earmarked specifically for customer orders. Um, so yeah. So if I've ordered something specific in for a customer, um, it goes in that box there. And then I know that I've ordered it and I know where it is. So that mostly goes in there. Oh, it's heavy. Then this box has got a lot of my lace fabrics in it. Um, I don't use these very often, to be honest. From time to time, um, customers do request them. So these are a lot of the uh, the remnants left over from that. I've also got some lengths of uh tool and some organza in there as well and then this box oh, it's really heavy that's why because it's got more lengths of uh cotton uh, corduroy in it so that all lives in there so this has got a lot of faux silk um kind of shantung fabric in here so that all lives in there i don't use a lot of this very often anymore um so this is just remnants of kind of what i've got left over now i've come around to the other side of the room where i have got my main work table where the machines live um and since actually i last recorded in the the tidying up revamping videos um i have actually gained a new machine um, yeah, so I now have an embroidery machine, um, which I'm still very much getting to uh, learn the ropes on that. And then I've got my overlocker, um, which I have had for many, many years. Um, and it is a little workhorse, this overlocker. I love it a bit. Um, and then in that corner, I have my main regular machine above the machine. So this is probably where I, you know, 80 to 90 percent of the time um, this corner is is where I sit and work. Um, so above the machine I've kind of got a lot of stuff within easy reach. So I have my uh, my sewing threads all in this really lovely little shelving unit up here. Um, and this was actually a, a car boot find where I paid five pounds for it, I think it's probably from like the 60s or 70s or something, but it is just perfect for storing all my threads in and I can see exactly what I've got um, within easy reach. Um, and then up above it over here, I've got a lot of 
pictures and postcards and sort of birthday cards that I've sort of collected and been given over the years. Images that, that either interest me. There's lots of bunny pictures because obviously I'm a big bunny fan. I've got a, a postcard of Monet's water lilies and again that's from when I went to Paris and saw the uh, the Musée d'Orangerie in Paris is where a specially built um, exhibition gallery um, where Monet's water lilies are displayed to the public. So that was amazing to see those in person and beautiful, beautiful colours. So I had to just pick up a little postcard just to sit there to remind me um, of my trip there. Um, I've also got some interesting people that I've worked with um, as well. Just got some contact details there to hand. Elegance is the only beauty that never fades, which is a quote by Audrey Hepburn on this really pretty card that I received for a birthday one year. I have a picture of my lovely friend Julia modelling my uh, Victorian wedding dress outfit there. Then the, the bluebell uh, card at the back there was actually painted by my great aunt. So that's a lovely thing to have. She's an amazing artist, especially with flowers, floral artistry. She's, yeah, absolutely amazing. And then I have other birthday cards that mean a lot to me um so i have a, a disney princess birthday card because you know what even if you're in your mid 30s you're never too old to have a disney princess birthday card and then i have a card which is the last birthday card um, my sister sent to me um before she died um she died just before my 30th birthday um so this card must have been written days before she died really um so yes yeah, so that was that's from her and we couldn't open it for a long, long time um, and now it's, uh, I just keep it up there. Funny pictures, cards from my husband, uh, interesting postcards that I've received. Sometimes when you get a uh, mail through the post from, you know, other sort of designers and, and people you collaborate with, they stick interesting little, little postcards in as well. So that's where some of those come from. And then over here on this corner is my rack with all my ribbons on and there's also some uh, bias binding rolls on there as well. These little shelving unit things are from, not the wooden ones, the, the white um, pegboards are from Ikea um, and again they're really really clever and the gimbal doesn't want to move and I'm trying to not Get the light from the window there we go that's better yeah so these little pegboard things and you can buy all different uh, like hooks and bars that uh, you can put these ribbon rolls on which is really good so they're really handy just having them to hand above my workstation there then underneath this uh, little uh, table in the corner um, is normally where my laptop uh, lives so it's kind of in the corner out the way behind my sewing machine and it just means that I can have uh, YouTube videos and, and things just playing in the background and it's also very easy that I can just you know if I get a, a message um, I can check emails and, and things like that um, throughout the day coming across back up to here is this shelving unit which again has got sort of bits and pieces of sewing paraphernalia on so this little basket up the end here has got all my overlocker threads in it. Um, so I've got a, a selection of sort of base colours that I use on a regular basis and they're there just to grab when I need to change the overlocker colours. Then next to it is a new box which has got the embroidery threads in it for the new embroidery machine. Um, so that's just living up there for the moment because I've sort of not had a chance to play with it yet. Then in these jars, um, I have got a lot of kind of my regular sort of basic buttons. And this jar here has actually got my button making um, bits in it. So you can see uh, this is the, the press for pressing the buttons together. And then I've got the sort of button blanks here, um, which you, you cover in fabric and then you, you press them together. And you create unique colourful buttons, which I'm on a mission to do this year with all this extra fabric stash which I have discovered and I'm determined to use. Um, yeah, it's going to be the year of uh, fabric covered buttons, I think. Um, and then I've got regular uh, black buttons in there, I think there's some red buttons as well. And this one has kind of white and mother of pearl um, and uh, sort of fake horn buttons 
um, in there. So that's all easily to hand. Um, I've got another box of my fancy buttons. I still need to go through and organise. So yeah, I've not quite sorted out where that's going to live yet as well. Um, these folders up here have my ribbon uh, shade cards in. So that's the, the satin and then there's the velvet ribbon card at the back there. Yeah, this photo is one of the earliest photos I had of my husband because um, that's how we met doing uh, a Viking reenactment. Um, so yeah, I had that sticky picture of him uh, fighting a battle somewhere. <laughs> I think it's York at the Jorvik Festival. And then I have a pen pot here um, and this was actually made by my sister. Um, so it's one of those um, blanks that you can buy from like Hobbycraft and then you uh, is it de decoupage over it as well. So my sister made that for me. It is a bunny with googly eyes and it's kind of cute and it's just yeah it's kind of lived with me. Then I have the a big roll of uh, piping cord, which I use a lot for when you're making Victorian and Regency sort of jackets and things. Um, they use a lot of piping, so nice to hand. And there's another char of cute vintagey style char filled with buttons as well. Just handy to have. Then underneath, I have got another of these little pegboards. Um, sorry, just looking. There's a lot of fabric samples in here at the moment so on there i've got sort of scissors hanging up i've got a few fabric samples hanging up of things i'm working on at the moment this teacup has got all my bobbin threads in um which is kind of handy to keep them just hanging there to easily grab when i'm changing the bobbin thread um, and the teacup is actually from a set belonging to my grandmother and um, it was her wedding present um, when she married my granddad. Um, I, I have got the full tea set um, in a box upstairs but I decided for whatever reason that this little teacup I was going to keep to hang my bob and Fred in because it, it looked cute and I was going through a phase of having teacups everywhere. <laughs> There's again yeah, more just sort of stationary paraphernalia in there, pens, uh, tweezers um, and then in the bottom in this tray down here I've got stitch on pickers, I've got the buttonhole foot for my machine, I've got some uh, chalk in there and then a lot of machine needles, spare machine needles in there. Um, then this kind of little plastic shell unit in the middle here again has a lot of haberdashery kind of items in it. Um, so this top one has, ooh, she says, panning it down, oh look more Disney princesses, um, sort of ribbons which I'm currently using this to make uh, like ribbon hanging loops in waistbands um, and it's also got uh, some pre-made sort of bias binding and piping bits and pieces in there and then the one underneath has a lot of um, just sort of general ribbons, uh, there's some bias binding, uh, there's elastic in there as well, waistband ribbons kind of thing in there and now it's all falling out back in there and then in here I have a lot of fastenings um so I've got hooks and eyes I have got some velcro tape in here um I don't use this very very often when I'm making sort of Victorian dresses but occasionally um and just recently in fact um I've been making some costumes for a uh, theatre production um, and sometimes they prefer to just have velcro um for quick changes so that's, that's handy to have in there um I've also got uh, buckles waistcoat buckles uh there's snaps um, and things in there as well, and there's a vintage, vintage tin which has got um, some hand sewing needles in it as well. And then this bottom drawer has got a few other utilitarian threads in it. Uh, so there's uh, shearing elastic threads, uh, there's some metallic threads, there's uh, nylon uh, threads, metallic threads, some spare pins, um, and some fancy. Uh, fancy yarn bits and there's also uh, embroidery gloss in there as well which I use for when doing flossing on uh, Victorian corsets and things like that so that all lives in there. Then behind the overlocker there's another one of these pegboards with various things hanging on it. The the weird dot things you can see there, they're the little gemstones uh, that I was using on my, uh, my, my world globe um, to mark when where customers are from. Um, so that's living there at the moment um, and then I've got my uh, 
bias binding, folding tools, um, and then there's a few more machine needles for the the overlocker and now the embroidery machine in there and there's sewing machine oil that lives in there as well. Um, and then on the wall above I've got some just interesting pictures and artwork. Um, you'll notice a lot of these, You, if you follow me you know I have a thing for Disney, um, I'm not gonna lie and I'm not ashamed to admit it. Um, but yeah these are all from a a calendar that we had a couple of years ago um, and it's the artist Thomas Kincaid who has done all these amazing uh, Disney artwork from the different films um, and after the year was out I salvaged all the pictures and put them on the wall um, because they look pretty and I like them. Thank you Lady in the Tramp, it's so cute. Um, we've got Snow White down there behind the headlamp. Um, so yeah, so then it's panning background past the window um, so you can see I've got the chair. So that that box in the corner, that's the last box of paperwork and it's also got my box of buttons, fancy buttons in there as well, which I need to kind of just sort out. The last bit of stuff that I need to sort out down there, just tucked in the corner. Um, that's the, the light ring for my um, my tripod when I'm doing kind of close-up filming um, because I'm move, moving around the room at the moment, so I'm just using the daylight through the window and the uh, ceiling lights. The bunny jar um, was hand-painted by a friend of mine um, and at the moment that's got uh, that is full of zips. Um, again, I very rarely use zips, so the ones that I've got left are just kind of popped in there. I have fairy ones because, of course, who doesn't have fairy ones? <laughs> um, and in the jar behind there is the what we call horsehair uh, crinoline braid, um, which I use for stiffening hems on a lot of my skirts as well. Without falling over the chair um, is the corner where there used to be the big uh, the shelving unit um, which had all the fabric in and is now, I mean, pretty much a clear corner. Um, most of the time my mannequins kind of live in the corner, they're out of the way, but it's also a really useful corner for photographing now as well before I send items out. So rather than having to um, kind of run around setting up, you know, an, a, another corner in another room in the house, um, I normally just pop the mannequin it means it's quick and easy to move the mannequin away from the, that corner and just put the mannequin that I want in there. I can pull the ironing board back and it's quick and easy. And I've got some interesting sort of vintage prints on the wall which sort of just make a nice backdrop for the photographs as well. So this print is actually from my nanny's bungalow when she moved into a care home after my granddad died. I must have always loved this picture. Um, just, yeah, it's so pretty. The ladies dancing the ballroom and it actually reminds me of a, a venue in Lincoln where we used to go and hold have balls and parties yeah it's just it's a lovely happy pretty picture and I really like it. and yeah I've always always liked it ever since my nanny had it hanging above her fireplace in her bungalow um, and now it's come to live with me but then over here I've got a Victorian fashion plate print which I bought from an antique store kind of in the back of my mind I've wonder I've always wanted to have a go at recreating um, one if not both of these dresses but yeah it would be fun so maybe maybe one day it'd be on the get add it to the list of, of projects for the future um, and then coming back around, so I've just got the, the ironing board and iron set up here. So then I think the last thing to talk about is just my labyrinth poster, um, which I finally got up there on the wall. And we're almost back around to the beginning. So yeah, Labyrinth was one of the first movies that I can remember my mum kind of showing me of these amazing costumes and characters in um I mean technically I think it came out the year I was it came out the year I was born um so sort of, I must have seen it a couple of years later and I remember my mum having a a VHS uh, recorded off the TV uh, tape that I used to play lots and lots and lots but it's always stuck with me um and yeah now I own yeah the, the vinyl soundtrack the DVD and and I have this amazing uh, movie poster, um, which I think came from a local cinema when they had a um, a special labyrinth uh, night um, a few years ago, and they had the the posters uh, uh, reproduced and made for sale. So yeah, that's just an awesome picture. So that is pretty much my little workroom. So I hope you enjoyed my little tour of my workroom space. I hope you find it useful, maybe even inspiring for your own workspace. Please do like. Uh, this video and subscribe uh, to my channel. Hopefully I will see you in the next video. So take care.
bye